oh, this old thing? It's laundry day. But that works because today we're going to talk about a classic fairy tale that has had many iterations over the years. As for my surroundings, they are indeed curiouser and curiouser, but we're undergoing some renovations, so I'm making the most of it. Without further ado, let's all commit to going a little bit mad as we follow the rabbit hole deep, deep down into the warped and terrifying world of Alice Madness Returns. As one would expect, this is a story about Alice Little from the original fairy tale Alice in Wonderland, written by English author Lewis Carroll in 1865. Both set in the Victorian era and hosting many of the same wacky cast of characters, Alice Madness Returns takes a hard left into calamitous territory. Best described as a psychological horror hack and slash action adventure, this video game played from a third person perspective was developed by independent studio Spicy Horse and released by EA for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360. I chose to play it on Xbox Series X as it is one of over 400 Xbox 360 titles that is fully backwards compatible. Gone is the flaxen locked girl full of innocence and wonder. We are ushered into an era of Alice much more daunting. A young raven-haired woman who has survived a very troubled life of emotional and mental anguish, she allows herself once again to fall into the delusions of Wonderland. For anybody that may not be familiar with the series, it actually began in 2000 with American McGee's Alice on PC, and was later planned to be ported to the PS2, but was cancelled in favor of adding it digitally to the sequel on Xbox 360 and PS3. As I skipped ahead and didn't play the series originator, I won't spend too much time here, but I will say I've heard mixed reviews. The game has had its share of praise and fandom, many commending the high artistic and technical quality of the level design while scrutinizing the redundant linear gameplay. My best suggestion is to have a go at it for yourself. Be your own judge. A review is only an opinion, not fact. So what's been up with Alice anyway? One might ask. A lot actually. Let me expand. The precarious journey of Alice unfolds in the first game. Believing she is responsible for a fire that engulfed her home and sadly her entire family, Alice is the sole survivor of a devastating, life-changing event. As Solace, she escapes into a twisted version of Wonderland, when, in reality, she is being held at Rutledge Asylum for treatment. Eventually, as she is able to conquer her delusions within the confines of the game, she rejoins reality and is released from the ward, but this is not the end of our heroine. We are once again reunited with Alice in Madness Returns, which takes place in 1875, a year after Alice's release. Under the care of Dr. Angus Bumby, a psychiatrist who uses hypnosis to help his child patients forget their memories, Alice secretly continues to be torn between her forlorn recovery and slipping back into the madness of her mind. While out on an errand, it's obvious that the community at large are very untrusting of Alice, what actually happened to her family and her mental state in general. Unfortunately for Alice, she does not give the residents of her town much reason to be trustful of her rehabilitation. In Carol's original version of Alice, she follows a white rabbit out of curiosity and boredom down the rabbit hole. In this game, she pursues a stray cat. In her pursuit, she begins hallucinating again. Surrounded by Jabberwockies, the circle closes and she cowers. She is snapped back to reality by the familiar voice of Pris Whitless, former nurse at Rutledge Asylum and the town drunk. She is infamous for blackmailing Alice as well as coercing her into believing she knows where Alice's sole prized possession is, a tattered white rabbit plush. Alice agrees to meet with and compensate Whitless for the information, and this is when a heated argument ensues, and Alice is plunged into Wonderland as she deliriously envisions the ground opening beneath her feet. Now I realize I went into great detail about Alice's origins, and I truly believe that is important to the player's education of a demented Alice you've never quite known before. However, I'm sure you're also interested about the gameplay, how the art style develops, and where the game goes from here. Back in Wonderland, we are reacquainted with Alice's psychoses quite mildly at first, and this is where the game truly begins. 
The White Rabbit continues to play a role in the game, but is secondary and much less pronounced to Alice's urgent desire to find and stop the train. This infernal train, inspired by Through the Looking Glass, although is never seen actually riding the Looking Glass Railway, is roaring through Wonderland, creating chaos in each world or chapter it touches. And there are six. The Hatter's Domain, aptly named, centers around the Mad Hatter, but serves as the introduction to the game and all of Alice's abilities. You are greeted by the Cheshire Cat, who much like the fiendish feline from the original fable is a mentor of sorts, popping up at random intervals throughout the game, with witty comments that should serve as hints, some are more subtle than others. A formidable companion with unmatched sarcasm. The enemies tip the scales, which is true of any great hack and slash, but that's okay. Alice does have a few allies and gains two of her four available weapons in this chapter. A Vorpal Blade, which is another nod to Carol as it was first introduced in a poem titled Jabberwock. While not the most powerful tool at Alice's disposal, it has its purpose as it is swift and is good for close combat. She also is entrusted with a pepper grinder or this game's version of a machine gun, both useful in defeating enemies or hitting targets throughout the game. Given to her by the Duchess, who if you remember has copious amounts of pepper in the original story, which caused everyone to sneeze and become foul tempered. She gives it to Alice in exchange for collecting pig snouts, since her diet is primarily porcine instead of mad woman these days. These pig snouts will do one of two things. Drop a basket that has rewards in the shape of roses or teeth. Big roses will fill an entire rose on the health meter. Smaller roses will fill the petals and the teeth are collected throughout the game and used as currency to upgrade weapons. Or it will reveal hidden passages called Rangela rooms that if successfully completed will fill an ink rose pot that will give Alice additional roses on the vine of her health meter. The Rangela rooms can be one of four varieties, quiz, battle, survival, or special. The special rooms are mini replicas of the level you are on, and the quiz room is the only room hosted by the Cheshire Cat at his domain. The other rooms are set upon a floating cog surrounded by giant forms of the Mad Hatter and his guests. This torturous challenge Alice must endure serves as entertainment for the tea party. She also is equipped with few accessories in this level, an umbrella to block an enemy's attack, or if timed properly, can deflect the attack and ricochet it back at the enemy, in essence, it has a dual purpose in being both a shield and a weapon. The Clockwork Bomb has numerous purposes as well. It can distract an enemy, injure an enemy with a timed release, or it can be used as a counterweight to help Alice make her way through the maze of Wonderland. I shouldn't forget that Alice can be maneuvered through jumping and floating, dodging, attacking, and shrinking, and I had almost zero complaints about the feel of the game and the fluidity of the controls. The shrinking technique is extremely layered as an ability. When in her shrunken form, purple phosphorus paint will direct Alice, letting her know what enemies are coming up, how to defeat or move through the levels, or unveil secret keyholes and platforms. While exploring the world around her, Alice is also collecting memories in various forms. While not necessary in order to finish the game, if you're someone that likes to 100%, this will certainly add on to the length of play. HowLongToBeat.com lists all levels at a median rate of 15 and a half hours to complete, while a completionist can expect to spend closer to 22 and a half hours. A useful tip that I somehow overlooked in my playthrough is that giant purple flowers will completely replenish Alice's health meter. If you stand in the middle of them, they will envelop you and then disappear. My favorite ability of Alice's was Hysteria. She would become invincible for a short period of time but to activate Hysteria, Alice must be near the edge of sanity, which means on her last rose. To equip it, you must toggle the left stick. However, if Alice is in the Flesh Maiden dress, she can enter Hysteria at any time, disregarding the amount of health she currently holds. When in her hysterical state, she takes no damage and her attack is twice as strong. She also becomes lit with a white hot rage and murmuring voices can be heard all around her. In between each level, Alice is thrust back into reality as a breaking point in between chapters. Sometimes these will be present day or a memory that has finally unfolded in Alice's mind. My favorite being the beginning of chapter five when Alice is stumbling through Rutledge Asylum in a flashback sequence. 
She wanders through the treatment rooms, regaling the nightmarish moments of her past, all the maniacal things that were done to her in the name of healing. It is both grotesque and beautiful and made me an even bigger Alice fan, rooting for her to dominate Wonderland and any enemy that stands in her path. The other five chapters, Deluded Depths, Oriental Grove, Queensland, The Dollhouse, and Infernal Train, introduce us to a plethora of allies and foes, and we also get to put hands on our final two weapons, the Hobby Horse and the Teapot Cannon. These are both heavy attack weapons that serve to inflict a maximum amount of damage. The Hobby Horse for close-up attacks as well as breaking harder objects and barriers, and the Teapot for a ranged attack that spurts boiling tea as an explosive searing lava-like bomb. A weapon that we dofully don't get to see, known as the Cup, originally had two primary attacks, one ranged attack and another melee. Similar to the current use of the pepper grinder, Alice could grind the end of the cup to allow the release of explosive materials to pursue her enemy. If Alice's enemy is too close, she could spin the cup around on a chain at high speed, similar to the fire whip. The fire whip was shown in the beta trailer, which sparked a lot of controversy when it did not come to fruition. Having played through this game without any prior knowledge, in all honesty, I can see why they cut it, as the other four weapons were more than plenty. The level designs are consistently creepy and masterfully done. However, I did find the dollhouse became a little redundant, and I found myself worrying that my game file had corrupted and hadn't saved properly. It felt a little like a glitch in the matrix that is Wonderland. The exception to the level design were a few side-scrolling sections that were really creative and a welcome change in the pace of the game. In Deluded Depths, we are tasked with piling the HMS Griffin through an ocean of lurking deep water creatures. In one instance, we are even manipulating a doll head rolling around a pinball type maze in the fifth chapter, Dollhouse. And in a few other chapters, we are Alice trying to triumph over the obstacles around her platforming left to right across the screen. Of course, each level has its own artistic flair, which is an absolute treat for the player. Alice's dress also changes concurrent with the landscape or the situation. My favorite chapter was the Queen's Land, which really was a wonderful nod to the original story, but did a great job of separating itself into being so much more than we could have ever anticipated. This is the only chapter we find ourselves evading an enemy that we seemingly cannot defeat. The Executioner is an overgrown card guard with a petrifying gargantuan scythe. Eventually, the Executioner meets his end in the ruins of the majestic maze. Alice finds a table with a cake resting on it, and as a last-ditch effort takes a bite and grows tremendous in size, squashing the awestruck pesky guard underfoot. I could talk to no end about each chapter, but I feel like I've given you the push that you might need to play through this magical and eerie title for yourself. Just know that each chapter never fails to impress the dread all around in a kaleidoscope of psychedelic colors. You are sucked in by Alice's persistence to rise above the ashes and champion. If you're like me and you've played through Alice recently and you find yourself wanting more, you'll be happy to hear that a sequel is constantly being worked on, but sadly, it has many hurdles to overcome. It has been stalled because of difficulty with EA and their protectiveness over IP rights. McGee originally intended October 2018 for the launch of the crowdfunding campaign, although it was put on hold in November 2018. McGee mentioned that the legal proceedings are going smoothly and if several sources I've read are true, crowdfunding is well underway and they remain empowered to pursue their passion project while being held high upon the shoulders of the insane children army. I'll be waiting with bated breath and will be sure to follow up on any details that may come down the pipeline. From what I've seen on American McGee's YouTube channel, it'll still be quite some time before a third installment is fully realized, which is slated to be both a prequel and a finish to the Alice trilogy. Until then, to get an Alice fix, you might consider watching Other Lands, which is a two-part animated short, Leviathan, and A Night at the Opera, with a runtime of just over 18 minutes combined, including a lengthy amount of end credits. Let me forewarn you that the art style and general feel of the animated short was not what I expected. More so for Leviathan, but does its job of answering what became of Alice after the cliffhanger of Alice Madness Returns. You can find them both on none other than your favorite streaming platform, YouTube. However, I will be sure to leave the links in the description. Thanks so much for taking a trip down the rabbit hole with me today. And just remember, if you stumble upon a tea party in the woods with tiny portions of eats and drinks, maybe pass. 
for the love of God, find some help. Until next time, game on.